Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is a part two to my previous video where I presented my 8088 PC compatible here, uh, all built on a ISA card and pretty compact. Um, if, if you see my previous video, I had a few errors that needed corrected. So this is the corrected PCB. Um, so I'm gonna talk through some of the features. Um, maybe I'll get some stuff in there I missed last time and do a little demo for those who uh, didn't see my previous video. I want to talk about uh, today's video sponsor real quick though. I've got a, it's JLC PCB. So I've been using JLC PCB to make my PCBs from the beginning. Started using them about four years ago. Um, they specialize in projects like mine for like quick turnaround. So I placed my order on the 17th of May and got it on the 23rd of May yesterday. Um, so that's what they kind of do for a uh, hobbyist like me. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description for my uh, GitHub page where I'll, I'll make this public. I have it on there now, but it's private. I'll make it public. So if you're one of those, those guys that like to start from scratch with a board and, and you want to take a go at it, uh, you can order your own blanks and see what you can do. Um, as usual, I'll get some of these listed on eBay, the complete boards for those who, who want it, and as well as blanks if you don't want to order um, a lot of them, uh, if you just want a single board. So go through the features of this. Um, so what I did on this was I stripped it down to what I felt was the bare minimum to run the, the PC system. So I'll just go across the top here. Um, I've got two, uh, 8284, uh, clock chips here. Um, one's for the processor. One is for the... ISA bus, the uh, DMA controller, and uh, system uh, interval timer, the, the keyboard controller, and the PC speaker frequency. Um, I did, I separated this on my project, as many of you may know, so that uh, the PC, the processor speed can be independent of the, the rest of the system, so you can go faster, basically. Um, next to that, I've got the uh, 74 uh, LS74, which is used to divide the clock uh, down for these items that we talked about. Got a um, IO decoder ROM. Uh, traded this out from a bunch of LS138s, LS139s, um, 64K ROM. So all address lines are connected, and then I use the the output uh, data to use them as chip chip select. So the default value is um, all ones, and then when you say address the uh, interrupt controller at port 20, then a particular data select will drop low. And that's the same for all the, the items there. I do have an LS 139, 138, and these are used for memory decoding um, and ROM decoding. And then I've got... Uh, LS 125, 126, and these are used, uh, you know, in conjunction to like turn the speaker on with uh, port 61 and uh, like writing to port uh, 61 and like the index register as well. Um, LS 04, there's a few things that have to be inverted, so that's on there. And then I've got my keyboard controller. Uh, I talked in my previous video, I would like to make this a, a DIP 40. But for now, I'm just using this 44-pin PLCC socket. Um, DMA controller, um, this is the 8237. This one's an AC-5. Um, you need this. I can actually pull this off the board in order to run, but you do need it for floppy drives and like your uh, sound blaster cards, which I've never played with the sound blaster kind. Index register port 80. Uh, this is used in conjunction with uh, the DMA controller for the upper four address lines. 
keep in mind this is a it's like a 16-bit address so this creates the remaining 20-bit address and then i have my socket here um like i've said in my last one i probably won't even solder this on for the it'll just be there for if you want to solder it on i may throw them in like a ziploc bag in the box if i melt them out because i do have a handful of those it's for the for using a onboard uh usb controller module but as i mentioned before because this is programmable you can change the address of this port uh keyboard using the ps2 type keyboard uh mainly because they're available if i use the big uh the old style that were larger uh, you just can't get those keyboards uh, I'll start back over here. We got the processor. Uh, this processor happens to be a V20. Uh, I have tried it with the 8088. It works fine. I just like the V20 because it's so much faster. Got our address latches, data, transceiver, and uh, your memory read write, IO read write decoder here. Then, as I mentioned, uh, RAM, 64K of RAM. Now, I, like I said, I wanted to strip this board down as small as I could. I almost went with 512, but I decided. I'd strip it down, but I would keep it fully functional. So it does have 64K. Then I've got my ROM here. Um, it's a 64K ROM chip. Um, most of the ROMs available for this board. And I'll provide a link for the ROM I'm using as well uh, in the description. Um, but most ROMs are like 32K, but that's fine. Then interrupt controller and uh, interval timer. So, to boot DOS, you actually need an interval timer. Well, DOS 622. I'm not sure on free DOS. You may not need it for free DOS. It waits for that. Um, oh, I can't remember the interrupt now, but it, it waits for that system uh, clock click to go. Got my port 61 here. This is used to turn the speaker on and off, as well as channel check on and off. Other than that, the rest of port 61 is not even connected to anything. Uh, LS07 for the keyboard logic. And then there is one more um, address latch here that's used with the DMA controller. So that's the that's the basic build of the board. PC speakers right there. Um, uh, we got a we do have a reset button over here. Um, on my original boards, I don't know if anybody paid attention or enough. I used to tie the reset to the power good off of the power supply. Um, which made it so that every time you boot it up, it would, uh, it would wait a, a little bit to power on so that there wasn't any glitches. And that's how the original PC was built. Um, and I was kind of, kind of, uh, stuck to using that because that's how the original was built. But on this one here, I just use a capacitor with a resistor and, uh, it gives it a brief delay before it, uh, enables the reset on the clock chips, which serves the same purpose. Um, I did dig out my own, my own made back plane. When I was looking for parts, I found this. Um, I probably won't be selling my own black back planes, at least not right away. Um, the commercial ones are just, they're, they're pretty good and they're, they're not too expensive. So let's get this all plugged into the, the board over here. So I've got, today the BIOS that I have in there um, has the BIOS extension for the USB module instead of the USB card. I have included an actual floppy drive today instead of the floppy emulator so that um, it can be observed that an actual floppy drive does work. So I got that all connected. I've got my keyboard, mouse. It's the only serial mouse I have. All right, let's get this booted up. Okay. 
Now, I use MS-DOS. I do have free DOS available. I don't usually try to send MS-DOS out with my boards. I'm not sure how Microsoft would feel about MS-DOS 62. I know they did make MS-DOS 1 and I think 4 open source, but I don't think they've made 62 open source yet. But MS-DOS is definitely a great operating system used on this, but FreeDOS works equally as well. I'm gonna put a disc in here. I'm just gonna reboot to the disc. Just now, oh, I didn't plug in my keyboard. Um, on these discs, um, I'm not sure why, other than it might, it's probably built or something to do with the BIOS. If you try to format them, it tries to format them, uh, as a 360 K disc. So the old larger floppy discs, even if you put in the, the slash F, uh, 720, it, it doesn't like to format the discs on this machine. So I format them on a different machine, but you can copy the system and all that to them. You just can't format them. Uh, normally you're not off the screen like this. Uh, it just happens to be this monitor. Uh, so that, that booted up to A colon just fine. Let's take a look and see what's on this discs. So just DOS. Let's go I'm reboot one more time. Take the disc out. I'm gonna run check it here in a minute. Uh, go through the system board. Maybe it's not on this one. Let's take a look here. Oh, it's not. Plug in my other USB here. So every time I reset this, I've used Control Alt Delete, or I just hit the reset button now, so that works. The only thing I haven't tried so far is a CGA card. I'm um, pretty confident it'll work. I'll, I'll probably make a video on that next day or two. Um, but I've, I've got like two CGA cards and one of them I think is damaged. So I, I can't even say if it to be a good check. Anyway, um, let's go through this. We'll test the system board. So... If you've been watching my channel for a while, you should know you'll always get a Feld there because I don't use the DMA for a DRAM refresh because this doesn't have DRAM on it. So if you look, it says channel zero Feld, but the rest of the channels work. Uh, so there shouldn't be an issue there. I thought about putting a little jumper on this board. Uh, let me know in the comments if, if you think it's necessary. I'm not sure if there's other... ISA cards that require a, a pseudo DRAM refresh or not. Let's check the benchmarks here. And being a V20 and it's running at 8 megahertz, um, this should come out as twice the speed of a standard PCXT. I just know because I've ran this a few times. If you see my video, it was the same last time. No math coprocessor. Um, I just never uh, put one on my board. It, it would require quite a few more chips. And uh, in the time I've had 8088s, I've never had one of the co-processors, so I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on much. Um, let's exit, return to DOS. Um, it's like an MSD real quick. So, if you look in here, it does know that it's a V20. It thinks it's got some extended memory. Um, I'm thinking that's just a setting in the BIOS or something that's got that messed up. 
it ABC that may be because when you um, have just a single drive sometimes you'll see it as B as well uh, these this is right I do have a parallel port on there and I do have com two com ports uh, serial mouse yeah that's on there so so that's kind of the system board there um, something I didn't mention earlier was once I built this board put it together put it in the uh, back plane it booted right up so I haven't had it crash yet or have any weird bugs like the original board had you know I've, I've gone and like touched the board in all kinds of places and checked it and it doesn't kill the system so I, I think it's a pretty solid running board at this point so anyway um, if you have any questions uh, post them in the comments um, if it's been a few months since I posted this and, and you want to get a hold of one and I don't have it listed, uh, send me an email or a message and uh, I can see what I can do to get you one. So anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today.